Hello everyone. Last time we've talked about Koenig lookup. Koenig lookup is for the purpose of function name search. It temporarily extends the scope of function name search to the space where the function parameter type is defined. So in this case it will extend the name search scope for G to the space where X is defined. Now is this really a good thing for us? Doesn't that defeat the very purpose of namespace and expose us to the danger of name crash? Another thing is, if I have another function g, which also in a namespace, and it doesn't take parameter, and then in main function I call this function g. This apparently will not work. So this call will succeed, and this call will fail. And they are both under the same context and calling a function from the same namespace. Doesn't that look a little weird? It is a little weird if you are not, not used to viewing parameter as a way of expanding the looking up scope for function. Nevertheless, Kinnick lookup is a good thing to have. And there are two main reasons behind that. One is a practical reason, and another one is a theoretical reason. Let me start with the practical reason. This is a code that we use very often. It prints out some message to the standard out. However, the reason this code can work is because of Koenig lookup. Although in the code we only have one std qualifier, there are two things in the code that comes from the std namespace. One is the C out, another one is the left shifter. So if we don't have Koenig lookup, we'll end up having something like this. This is very ugly. And what's worse is this code won't even compile. In order for it to compile, you have to do something like this. This is even uglier than previous one. So having shown you the alternatives, I imagine you have started appreciating Koenig lookup. Koenig lookup make it easier to mimic the behavior of operator that's provided by C++ core language. Therefore, makes your code cleaner. Now, the theoretical reason. Let's ask the question, what is the interface of a class? We have a namespace A, and inside A we have a class C. What is the interface of C? Apparently, all the public functions that are defined inside C are part of the interface of C. However, if I have another function called void H, which operates on C, does function H belong to interface of C? If you are hesitating, let me give you another one the left shift operator. Does this guy look like an interface of C? I would argue both of them should be part of the interface of C. Let's look at the definition of a class. A class describes a set of data along with the functions that operate on that data. So the definition didn't say along with the member functions that operate on the data. It only says functions. So by definition, the function h and the left shift operator are not excluded from the class. And if you really think about it, from C's client's point of view, there is no fundamental difference between using function f and function h. In either case, they are using class C and calling some function that operates on class C. Now suppose I have another function, j, which also operates on C, but it is outside the namespace of A. Will you call j function part of C's interface? 
Apparently not. J looks very much like a client function that operates on class C. So with that, I'm introducing an important engineering principle. The principle says functions that operate on class C and in the same namespace with C are part of C's interface. Vice versa, functions that are part of C's interface should be in the same namespace as C. Say I have defined an object of C. Since the syntax says I can invoke C's member function without using a qualifier, I should also be able to invoke a non-member function that operates on C without using a qualifier, if that function comes from the same, same namespace as C. Because both functions belong to the interface of C. This is the theoretical reason behind Koenig lookup. Now, suppose I am a little suspicious about this principle. What will happen if I have a non-member function that should belong to C's interface but not in the same namespace as C? Will it bite me? Let's look at the example. We have a namespace A and inside A we have a class C. Then we define an operator plus that works on C. This operator really should belong to the interface of C but it is not in the same namespace as C. In the main function, I create an array of C and then call the standard library function accumulate on the array. And here is the definition of the function accumulate. You can ignore most of the function. What's important to us is the accumulate function belongs to namespace std and the accumulate function will invoke the operator plus. Since we've already defined an operator plus for C, apparently this is what we want to use. Now the question is, when the compiler sees the operator plus, can it find our operator plus successfully? The answer is probably not. It depends on what header files that you have included. Remember the name hiding rule? When the compiler sees the operator plus, it will first search an operator plus in the current scope. And if it cannot find one, it will go to the global scope and search for it. However, if the compiler did find an operator plus in current scope, regardless of the types of parameter that plus is taking, it will stop searching. That is really bad because there are a bunch of operator plus that's defined in the namespace std. And you could easily include some header file and our own operator plus is hidden. So you see, this could indeed bite me. And the solution is follow the principle and put that operator plus in the same namespace as C. Now the compiler will be able to see our operator plus because of the Koenig lookup. This is why we should remember the principle and apply them during our daily coding. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to my channel so you will be updated when I post a new video. Or you can go to my channel's homepage and click on playlists to see other videos that I'm offering. Bye bye.